Welcome one and all, I have been working on this video for months and months, now it's time for its release. Of course my efforts are not guaranteed to bear fruit unless you like this video, and you can share in social media or with your friends who also play Genshin. I know that a lot of people in the Genshin community, especially newcomers, always ask how to build characters, so I'll show everyone in this video. My name is Fireheart and I'm proud to present to you today the Genshin Impact Character Almanac. This video will contain a brief description of each character, the best role that they perform in a team, a short explanation of their kit, some weapon choices, best artifact set and stats, and talent priorities. This video has been timestamped for your convenience, but before we begin, a few disclaimers. But without further ado, let's begin. The Kaida Prince, chief alchemist of the Knights of Avonius, and homunculus curated by the great Sinner. Albedo is a 5-star Geo Swordsman. Albedo's role on a team is of a support DPS. Albedo's main role is to place down his elemental skill, and when characters strike an enemy, Albedo will also deal damage with his elemental skill on field. But also Albedo has his elemental burst, which deals a little bit of damage and explosions if cast within the elemental skill, but it also grants you elemental mastery. His best weapons in slot are the Cinnabar Spindle, Primordial Jade Cutter, and the Harbinger of Dawn. For artifact sets, his best in slot is the 4-piece Husk of Opulent Dreams, prioritizing crit rate and crit damage and defense percent. His talent priorities are skill over burst and normal attack is not that important. The Feeble Scholar, Scribe of the Academia, and the Acting Grand Sage, Alhaitan is a 5-star Dendro Swordsman. Alhaitan is a main DPS using his chisel-like mirrors generated by his elemental skill to empower his normal attacks with the power of Dendro. And his elemental bursts deal damage based on how many chisel-like mirrors there are present. His best weapons are the Light of Foliar Incision, Primordial Jade Cutter, the Umbrella Tokapo Shigure, or the Iron Sting. His best artifact set is the Fur Piece Gilded Dreams, prioritizing crit rate and crit damage with a little bit of elemental mastery. For talents, you should prioritize normal attack over skill over burst. The first playable character that we get properly introduced in the game, and everyone's first 4 star, Ember, the Outrider of the Knights of Abonius. She is a free to obtain 4 star Pardo Archer. Ember has quite a bad reputation for not being a very powerful character and not having a properly defined role, but mostly she is used as a support, and she has an increased power with her Baron Bunny at higher constellations. For her support playstyle, weapons like the Elegy for the End and Favonius Warble are preferred, but there are other options such as the Skyward Harp and Prototype Crescent. Her best artifact set may vary, but Crimson Witch of Flames will be a great choice in most situations. Of course, prioritize crit rate and crit damage with a little bit of energy recharge and attack percent. Prioritize her elemental skill over burst and normal attacks are not important. The leader of the Arataki game, the one and only Arataki Ito is a 5-star Geo Great Swordsman. He is a main DPS with his main power focused on his elemental burst, and of course his elemental skill throwing Ushi deals quite a bit of damage as well. For weapons, the best in slot is the Red Horn Stone Thrasher. The Wolf's Gary Stone is a great choice from the standard pool of 5-star weapons. The Serpent's Spine is a great choice if you have the Battle Pass, otherwise you can craft the White Blind. 
His best artifact set is the 4-piece Husk of Opulent Dreams, prioritizing crit rate, crit damage, and defense percent. For talents, prioritize normal attack over burst over skill. The owner of Bubu Pharmacy, Chichi's Guardian, seeker of immortality and master of the medicinal arts, Dr. Baiju is a 5-star Dendro Mage. He plays the role of a shielder and a healer. With his elemental skill, Baiju sends out a wave of Dendro that will attack up to 3 opponents, then return, healing party members. And with his elemental burst, Baiju conjures a shield which will defend the character, damage opponents and heal the active character. His best and signature weapon is the Jade Fall Splendor, followed by Prototype Ember, Avonios Codex, and Trillion Tales of Dragon Slayers. His best artifact set is the 4-piece Deepwood Memories. Prioritize HP% percent over Energy Recharge over Elemental Mastery. Prioritize his skill and burst all the same. The idol of Monsta and sister of the Church of Avonios, Barbara is a 4-star free to obtain Hydro Mage. Barbara's main use on a team is of a healer. With her elemental skill, she heals the active character in burst. And for her elemental burst, she can heal all party members at once. Her best weapons are the Everlasting Moonglow, Prototype Amber, and Trilling Tales of Dragon Slayers. For artifact sects, you can use the 4-piece Maiden's Beloved or the 4-piece Ocean Hued Clan or even a mix of both of them, prioritizing HP% percent, Energy Recharge and Flat HP. For talents, prioritize Q over Burst over Normal Attacks. The Captain of the Crooks, the Indomitable Beidou, is a 4-star Electro Great Swordswoman. Her role can be of a sub DPS using her elemental burst to attack in conjunction with your current active character, or of a main DPS using her own burst to trigger her own powers, and using her elemental skill to parry and repost enemy attacks. Her best weapons are the Wolf's Gravestone, Serpent Spine, Skyward Pride, and the Prototype Archaic. For her artifact sets, the best in slot is the 4-piece Emblem of Severed Fate, prioritizing crit rate and crit damage, and energy recharge. For her sub-DPS playstyle, you should prioritize burst over skill and not bother with normal attacks. But if you are playing her as main DPS, you should prioritize normal attack, burst and skill all the same. The ever unlucky adventurer Bennett has the reputation of being one of the best characters in the game. He is a 4 star pyro swordsman. This powerhouse 4 star can be fitted in almost any team. He works as a battery, a damage amplifier, and a healer at the same time. Bennett's weapons should be the ones with the highest base attack, since his damage amplification scales with it. Such weapons include the Aquila Favonia, the Ali Flash, and the Skyward Blade due to the secondary stat of Energy Recharge. His best artifact set is the Noblesse Oblige, focusing on HP% percent, Energy Recharge and Flat HP. Prioritize his burst above everything and a little bit on his skill, but you don't need his normal attacks. The Scion of Al Ahmad and Guardian of Aru Village, Candace is a 4-star Hydra Spearwoman. Her main role is of a support. With her elemental burst, she is capable of infusing normal attacks of other party members with the power of Hydro. And her elemental skill, you can absorb enemy attacks and unleash a powerful Hydro attack. Her best weapons are the Black Tassel, Pavonius Lens, and the Catch. Her best artifact set is the Ambler of Severed Fate, or the Tenacity of Millilith. You should prioritize energy recharge, crit rate and crit damage, and HP percent. Prioritize her burst over her skill, you should not worry about her normal attacks. The popsicle sucking exorcist of Liwei, Chong Yun is a 4 star cryo great swordsman. He can be a support infusing your active character's normal attacks with the power of cryo and unleashing his powerful elemental burst. 
or he can also play as a main DPS, since his own weapon also gets coated with the power of Cryo. For weapon priorities we have the Serpent Spine, Wolf's Gravestone, Provonius Greatsword and Prototype Archaic. His best artifact sets are the 4-piece Noblesse Oblige or Emblem of Severed Fate. Prioritize energy recharge and crit stats above anything else. For talent priority, prioritize his burst over his skill over his normal attacks. Unless you are playing him as a main DPS, and you should bump up those normal attacks. The star of the Genshin manga, Trainee Forest Ranger Kole, is a four-star free to obtain Dendro Archer. She plays the role of a support and sub DPS, afflicting enemies with Dendro and dealing damage in the process. Her best weapons are the Elegy for the End, Sacrificial Bow, Favonius Bow, and the End of the Line. Prioritize using 4 piece Deep Wood Memories, focusing on Energy Recharge, Crit Rate and Damage, and EM or Attack Percent, depending on the situation. Prioritize her burst above her normal skill. Sino, the leader of the Matra, and in his position as General Mahamatra, he strikes fear in many scholars of the Academia. He is a 5-star Electro Spearman. Sino plays a role as a main DPS focusing his power on his elemental burst. Together with his elemental skill, he can dish out powerful strikes, combining and amplifying his elemental skill in the mix. His best weapons are the Staff of Scarlet Sands, Primordial Jade Wind Spear, the Deathmatch, and the Kitane Cross Spear. For artifact sets, you can use the 4-piece Gilded Dreams or Thundering Fury, prioritizing crit rate and damage, elemental mastery, and energy recharge. Prioritize his burst over his skill over his normal attacks. The flame main of the Aramites, ex bodyguard to Dunyazad, and one of the people who helped defeat the corrupt government of Sumeru, Dia, is a 5 star Pyro Great Swordsman. Forgive me if I don't get things very right on this one, I'm writing this while Dia is not even out yet, but most of it should be accurate. Dia plays a role of main DPS, using her elemental burst to do the bulk of the damage and her elemental skill is there mostly to generate elemental particles in help in small ways. However, Dia with her elemental burst does not have a lot of on-field time. Her best weapons in slot are the Beacon of Reed Sea, Wolf's Gravestone, Skyward Spine, and Prototype Archaic. Her best set is the 4-piece Crimson Witch of Flames. Prioritize crit rate and damage, HP% percent, and energy recharge, and prioritize her burst over her skill. Diluc, the Dark Knight hero, former member of the Knights of Favonius, and owner of the Angel Shear Tavern and Dawn Winery, is one of the characters that has been in the game since its release, and in 1.0 he was known to be the best DPS at the time but he has heavily fallen out of favor. He is a 5-star standard banner Pyro Great Swordsman. Diluc is a main DPS who uses his elemental burst to infuse his claymore with Pyro, then mix and match his normal attacks and elemental skill, while melting or vaporizing his attacks. He may not have a signature weapon, but he is usually associated with the Wolf's Gravestone. Other DPS-focused claimers, such as the Serpent Spine, Prototype Archaic, and Blackleaf Slasher, are good choices. Diluc's best artifact set is the Crimson Witch of Flames, prioritizing crit rate and damage, and attack percent. Playing as Diluc, you should prioritize normal attack, skill and burst all the same. The bartender of the cat's tail and so-called wine industry slayer, Diana is a 4-star cryo archer. She plays the role on the team of both a shielder and a healer, with her elemental skill producing a shield based on how many icy paws you hit the enemy with. And for her elemental burst, she will throw down a field of healing that will also damage and apply cryo to enemies. Her best weapons are the Elegy for the End, Sacrificial Bow, Pavonius War Bow, but if Gacha has not favored you yet, you can use the End of the Line. For her artifact sets, you can mix and match 
two of the following artifact pieces. Tenacity of the Millilith, Maiden's Beloved, Ocean Healed Clan, and Emblem of the Severed Fate. Just be sure to prioritize HP percent, energy recharge, and flood HP. And for talents, be sure to prioritize skill and burst all the same. The shrewdest of Sumeru merchants, Glory, is a 4-star Electro Gate Swords girl. She plays the role of both a support and a healer, helping out her allies with electro application and healing on her elemental burst, and her elemental skill deals a little bit of damage, but also is used as a battery. For her weapons, prioritize using Skyward Pride, Sacrificial Greatsword, and the Favonius Greatsword. For her artifacts, prioritize in using a mix of Tenacity of the Millilith and Maiden's Beloved or Ocean Healed Clan, always prioritizing HP and Energy Recharge. Also, for her talents, prioritize Elemental Burst over her skill. Born a noble woman, but turned the captain of the Knights Favonius reconnaissance team, the Spindrift Knight, Eula Lawrence, is a 5-star Cryo Great Swordswoman. She plays the role of a main DPS, or specifically, her physical attacks deal massive damage. Her normal attacks are quite powerful, but together with her elemental skill, which can stack twice before releasing a powerful AoE attack, and her elemental burst that increases in power the more normal attacks hit on the opponent. Eula can do quite a lot of physical damage. Her signature weapon is the Song of Broken Pines, but you can also use the Wolf's Gravestone, Serpent's Pie, or Prototype Archaic. Her best artifact is the 4-piece Pale Flame, prioritizing crit rate and damage, energy recharge, and attack percent. Prioritize her burst, normal attack, and skill all the same. Faduzan, <clears throat> excuse me, Madame Faduzan is a renowned professor of the Sumeru Academia and member of the Haravatat Darshan. She is a four-star animal archer. Faduzan plays the role of a support, more specifically, for the animal element. For her elemental skill, Aruzan can deploy a polyhedron that deals a small amount of damage, and after that, her next charge shot will create a pressurized arrow that will group up enemies. But her biggest use on a team is her elemental burst, which will go around in a triangular pattern, dealing animal damage to enemies, shredding their resistance, and increasing animal damage bonus for party members. Her best weapons are the Elegy for the End, Pavonius Warble, and Sacrificial Bow. For artifact sets, you can use the 4-piece Iridescent Venereur, prioritizing energy recharge and crit rate and damage. For talents, prioritize her burst over her skill. The Princess and the Veritalan, Fischl von Lufenschloss Nafendor. I hope I didn't butcher that. Or simply Fischl or Amy is an investigator of the Adventurer's Guild. She is a 4-star Electro Archer. She can play the role of a sub-DPS using her elemental skill Oz to deal electro damage and apply electro to enemies while she is off-field. And with her elemental burst, she transforms into Oz and deal damages to enemy before summoning Oz again as if it were her elemental skill. But she can also play the role of main DPS using Oz to apply Electro to enemies, combining with Cryo, turning her into a physical damage dealing DPS. For her weapons, you can use the Mitishna's Waltz, Elegy for the End, Skyward Harp, or the Prototype Crescent. For her artifacts, you can use the Thundering Fury, or Tenacity of Millilith for her off-field playstyle. Or you can use the Shimanawa's Reminiscence, or you can use the Pale Flame, to use her as a main DPS. In either case, prioritize crit rate and damage, attack percent or elemental mastery, and energy recharge. For talents and her sub DPS playstyle, prioritize skill over burst, but if you are playing her as main DPS, prioritize normal attack over skill over burst. The secretary of UA High Pavilion, the half human. 
of Chilean Adeptus, and in my opinion, most powerful and my personal favorite character, Ganyu is a 5 star cryo archer. Although Ganyu can play the role of a sub DPS, her main role is of a main DPS. Using her charge shot, Ganyu can deal devastating damage to enemies. Her elemental skill taunts enemies so she can prepare her charge shot. And her elemental burst creates a shower of ice onto enemies, which deals quite a lot of damage if played correctly. Her best weapons are the Amos Bow, Skyward Harp, Prototype Crescent, and Hamayumi. For her artifact sets, you can use the Wanderer's Troop to play her Melt playstyle, or you can use Blizzard Strayer to play a Freeze playstyle. Prioritizing crit rate and damage, attack percent, energy recharge if you are playing her for her burst, otherwise prioritize EM for melts. Prioritize her normal attack which includes her charge shot over her burst over her skill. The general of the Watatsumi army, the K9 warrior, Yoro, is a 4 star Geo archer. He plays the role of a support, mainly for Geo characters. With his elemental skill, Goro puts down a field that will increase the benefits the more Geo units you have on your team. His elemental burst is basically a mobile version of his elemental skill, but with a few added bonuses, like dealing crystal collapses to the enemy which deal Geo damage, and pulling elemental shards to your active character. His best weapons are the Favonius War Bow, Sacrificial Bow, or the end of the line. His best artifact set is the Husk of Opulent Dreams, however you can also use Noblesse Oblige, and even the 4 star set Exile. But in any case, prioritize Energy Recharge and Defense Percent. For his talents, all you need to level up is his skill. Need a coupon for your own funeral? If you are in Teyvat, the 77th director of the Wangshan Funeral Parlor has got you covered. Hu Tao is a 5 star pyro spear woman. Hu Tao plays the role of a main DPS, using her elemental skill to sacrifice her health to coat her spear in pyro, dealing powerful charged attacks. And when her health is low, unleash her elemental burst to deal a lot of damage and heal you back up. For her best weapons, we have her signature weapon, the Staff of Homa, the Primordial Jade Wind Spear, the Blackleaf Polearm, and the Missive Wind Spear. Her best artifact is the Crimson Witch of Flames, prioritizing crit rate, crit damage, and HP percent. Prioritize her normal attack over her skill over her burst. Jin Gunhilder is the acting grandmaster of the Knights of Favonius, and she is at all times working in such position. She is a 5 star standard banner animal swordswoman. She is first and foremost a healer, using her elemental burst to heal allies in the blink of an eye, and imbuing animal to whoever stands in the field. Her elemental skill can be used as a battery to other animal characters but also to displace enemies. While playing Jin, swords that give you attack or energy recharge are beneficial, such as the Skyward Blade, the Favonio Sword, and the Amenoma Kageuchi. Jin can make use of a variety of artifact sets depending on what you need. If you want more healing, using Two Piece Maiden's Beloved or Ocean Healed Clam and Two Piece Emblem of Severed Fate is a good overall choice. But if you want some damage support, you could use the 4 piece Viridescent Venerer, always prioritizing attack and energy recharge. Prioritize her burst over her skill. The Wandering Samurai who escaped Inazuma during the Vision Hunt Decree, and now a temporary member of the Crooks, Kadahara Kazuha, is a 5 star animal swordsman. He plays the role of a sub DPS, using his elemental skill to suck up enemies and deal devastating damage with his raw reactions. His elemental burst creates a dome vortex that will continuously deal animal damage and damage of the infused element. He is one of the best characters in the game, and if you are thinking of getting him, you can just go for it. For his best weapons, we have the signature Freedom Sworn, 
the standard banner Jade Cutter, the 4 star owned banners Sacrificial Sword, and for the free to play homies a craftable Iron Sting. His best artifact set is the 4 piece Verdescent Venerer, prioritizing EM and energy recharge. Prioritize his Q over his worst over his normal attacks. Kaya Albrecht is the cavalry captain of the Knights of Favonius, the Luke's adoptive brother and descendant of Kanria. He is a 4 star, free to obtain, cryo swordsman. Kaya can play the role of a main DPS using his freeze to combine with Electro for some increased physical damage, or he can play the role of a sub DPS using his elemental burst to help him freeze compositions and also using his Q as a battery. His best weapons are the Misplitter Reforge, Aquila Favonia, Blackleaf Longsword, and the Amenoma Kageyuchi. For artifact sets, you can use the 4 piece Blizzard Strayer or 4 piece Pale Flame for physical damage. Or if you want a more support based Kaya, you can use the Noblesse Oblige. For Kaya stats, prioritize crit rate and damage, energy recharge, and attack percent. Prioritize his burst over his skill on his support playstyle. And for his main DPS, prioritize normal attacks over burst over skill. The Shirazaki Himegimi, in charge of the internal and external affairs of the Kamisato clan, Kamisato Ayaka, is a 5 star cryo swordswoman. She plays the role of a main DPS, using her sword skills together with her powerful elemental burst to deal devastating damage in freezing compositions. Her best and signature weapon is the Misplitter Reforge. For the standard banner, we have the Primordial Jade Cutter. From the battle pass, we have the Black Sword. And for crafting, we have the Amenoma Kageyuchi. Her best artifact set is the Blizzard Strayer. Prioritizing crit damage, a little bit of crit rate, energy recharge, and attack percent. For her skills, prioritize her burst over her normal attack over her skill. Ayaka's brother, head of the Kamisato clan and Yashiro commissioner, Kamisato Ayato, is a 5-star Hydro Swordsman. Ayato uses his elemental skill as his main source of power. Utilizing his elemental skill and holding his normal attacks will allow you to deal consecutive rapid slashes of Hydro damage. And with his elemental burst, he creates a field similar to Ganyu, but instead of Cryo, this one is Hydro. It can be used in either Vaporize Team Compositions, Taser Team Compositions, or even Freeze Compositions. His best and signature weapon is the Haran Gepaku Futsu, the Primordial Jade Cutter, the Black Sword, and the Amenoma Kageyuchi. His best artifact set is the Echoes of an Offering, prioritizing crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent. Prioritize his normal attacks over his Q over his burst. A great architect from Sumeru, who built Doris Residence, former student of the Kashashawar Darshan, I hope I didn't butcher that, known as the Light of the Kashashawar, and even though being the seemingly famous and rich, is none of both. Sharing a house with Al Hayton, Kave is a four star, the Andro Great Swordsman. He plays the role of a main DPS or support. Using his elemental skill, Kave will scan a radius around him, dealing damage and causing all dendro cores in that area to detonate immediately. For his elemental burst, Kave causes an AoE dendro explosion and converts his normal attacks to deal dendro damage, extending their reach, increasing his resistance to interruption, and increasing the damage of dendro core's detonation. His best weapons in slot are the Skyward Pride, the Mailed Flower, the Favonius Greatsword, and the Forest Regalia. His best artifact set is the Four Piece, Deep Wood Memories, prioritizing elemental mastery, energy recharge, and crit rate and damage. Prioritize his burst over his normal attack, and his Q is less important. The Yuhang of the Liwe Chishin and Secret Morax Shrimp, Kachin, is a standard banner 5 star Electro Swordswoman. She plays the role of a main DPS, using her elemental skill to infuse her normal attacks with the power of Electro, and having quite a decent elemental burst as well. Her best team compositions are usually Quicken and Harper Boom. 
Her best weapons are the Misplitter Reforged, the Primordial Jade Cutter, the Lion's Roar, and the Amenoma Kageyuchi. For artifact sets, you can use the 4 piece Thundering Fury or the 4 piece Gilded Dreams. Prioritize crit rate and damage, elemental mastery, and attack percent. For talents, prioritize her normal attack over her burst over her skill. Aninazuma Yokai, Nekomata to be specific. Gold level of the Komania Express and the company's sole international courier due to her diligence. Hirara is a 4 star Dendro Swordsman. She plays the role of a shielder and support. By tapping her elemental skill, Kirara will kick and create a Dendro Shield. And by holding the skill, Kirara will enter her cardboard box, running around, dealing Dendro damage to enemies that come in contact. And when it ends, she will also deal the flipping kick. While in the box, Kirara also gains increased speed in the ground and for scaling walls. The longer time in the box, the longer the cooldown. For her elemental burst, Kirara deals an AoE dendro explosion, leaving little cat-shaped bombs that will explode in contact with the enemy or after a set duration, dealing dendro damage. Her best weapons are the key of Kajni suit, the Favonia sword, the sacrificial sword, and the sapwood blade. For her artifacts, prioritize using two piece tenacity of the Millilith and two piece Rukasha's glow. Prioritize HP% percent over energy recharge and crit if you are gonna use her damage. Prioritize her skill over her burst. Klee is also known for being one of the most powerful forces in Mondstadt, at least lore-wise, even though she is just a small girl. But she is the daughter of one of the most powerful mages in all of Tevat, Alice. She is under the constant vigilance of the Knights of Avonius and is known as the Spark Knight. She is a 5 star pyro mage. She is a main DPS that deals purely pyro damage by throwing bombs at the enemies. That has a unique trait amidst Catalyst users that they can break shields and similar constructs at a faster rate. Usually Klee is best paired with Vaporize or Melt team compositions. The Spark Knight got her signature weapon, the Dodo Cocktails, on the first run of the Golden Apple Archipelago. But besides that, she can use most DPS focus catalysts, such as the Skyward Atlas, Lost Prayer to the Secret Winds, the Weed Sith, and many others. Klee's best artifact set is the Crimson Witch of Flames, prioritizing the crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent. Prioritize her normal attack over her skill, over her burst. Raiden Shogun's number one fan, the Tengu General of the Tenryo Commission, Kujo Sara, is a 4 star Electro Archer. She plays the role of a support and sub DPS, using her elemental skill to power up your Electro main DPS and with her elemental burst doing the same, but also dealing quite a considerable amount of damage. For her weapons, Kucho Sara usually prefers high base attack weapons, such as the Skyward Harp, Allergy for the End, Sacrificial Bow, and Favonius Warbow. For her artifacts, you can either use 4-piece Emblem of Severed Fate, or 4-piece Noblesse Oblige, always prioritizing energy recharge, crit rate and damage, and attack percent. Prioritize her skill over her burst over her normal attacks. A former Shrine Maiden, and now the deputy of the Ed Attack Gang, Kuki Shinobu is the brains of the Ragtag group of misfits. She is a 4 star Electro Swordswoman. She plays the role of a healer using her elemental skill, sacrificing her own health to heal your active character and her elemental burst has her plunging her sword into the ground, unleashing a quick burst of electro damage. Her best weapons are the Key of Kajni Suit, the Primordial Jade Cutter, the Favonia Sword, and the Iron Steam. Her best artifact set is the Tenacity of the Millilith, prioritizing HP, energy recharge, and crit rate and damage. Prioritize her skill over her burst. The sleeping somnambulist student of Sumeru specializing in astrologists. Lila is a 4 star cryo swordswoman. 
She plays the role of a sub DPS and shielder. Using her elemental skill creates a shield and will also create shards that will periodically be shot at enemies, dealing a small amount of cryo damage. And her elemental burst creates a field of shooting cryo stars. Her best weapons are the Key of Kajni Suit, Primordial Jade Cutter, Pavonio Sword and Sacrificial Sword. For artifacts, the best in slot is the Tenacity of the Millilith, prioritizing HP, Energy Recharge, Crit Rate and Damage. Prioritize her skill over her burst. The original Onesama and most utilized character to climb cliffs and mountains, Lisa, the librarian of the Knights of Avonius, is a free to obtain 4 star Electro Mage. She can play the role of a support, utilizing her elemental burst to help dendro and physical characters. Her best weapons are the Kagura's Verity. Lost Prayers to the Sacred Winds, the Widsith, and the Favonius Codex. For artifacts, you can use the 4-piece Gilded Dreams or Thundering Fury, prioritizing crit rate, crit damage, energy recharge, and elemental mastery or attack. Prioritize her burst over her skill. Returning from Varka's expedition to the Order of the Knights of Favonius, as a frontline land surveyor, Mika is a 4-star Cryo Spearman. He plays the role of a support and a healer, using his kit to empower the party's physical damage, as well as healing in conjuncture with normal attacks. His best weapons in slot are the Favonius Lance, Engulfing Lightning, Skyward Spine, and the Black Tassel. For his artifact sets, you can use the 4-piece Noblesse Oblige, Prioritizing HP% percent, energy recharge and crit rate and damage. Also, prioritize his burst over his Q. Mona Magistus, the great astrologer, who spends all her money on, well, astrology stuff, and gets basically nothing to eat due to her somewhat irresponsible spending. She's a standard banner, 5-star Hydro Mage. She plays the role of a support using her elemental burst to increase your party's damage for a short time and also dealing quite a considerable amount of damage in the process. Also, her elemental skill can be used to taunt enemies and apply hydro to them. Her best weapons are the Lost Prayer to the Sacred Winds, Skyward Atlas, the Widsith, and Trilling Tales of Dragon Slayers. For her artifact, the best in slot is the Emblem of Severed Fate, prioritizing energy recharge, crit rate and damage, and attack percent. For her talents, all you need to level up is her burst. The Brick Brain Archon of Genshin's Fourth Nation that was imprisoned in the Sanctuary of Surastana, but now reigns Sumeru with hands on. Buer, aka Lesser Lord Kusanali, or simply Nahida, is a 5 star Dendro Mage. This Archon may be little, but her power is great, using her elemental skill to mark and link enemies, which will periodically trigger a proc of Dendro damage when attacked, and also all linked enemies will be dealt damage as well. And her elemental burst confers you with a great amount of buffs, but also increases your elemental mastery. Depending on how much elemental mastery the character in the party with the highest stats have, her best and signature weapon is the Thousand Floating Dreams. From the standard banner, you can get the 5 star Scarlet Atlas or the Sacrificial Fragments, or you could craft the Map of Mari. For artifact sets, prioritizing using Deep Wood Memories, or you could use Guild the Dreams. But always prioritize Elemental Mastery over Crit Rate and Damage over Energy Recharge. Prioritize her skill over her burst over her normal attacks. The beautiful and graceful red-headed dancer of Zuber Teeter, Nilu, is a 5-star Hydro Swordsman. She plays the role of a support or a DPS, using her elemental skill to change bloom cores into bountiful cores. 
and her elemental burst deals AoE hydro damage. Her best and signature weapon is the Key of Kajni Suit. For a 5 star of the standard banner, you can use the Primordial Jade Cutter. In From Craftables, you can use the Iron Sting or the Sap with Blade. Her best artifact set in slot is the 4 piece Flower of Paradise Lost. Or you could use 2 piece Tenacity and 2 piece Emblem. But always prioritize HP, Energy Recharge and Elemental Mastery. For her off-field playstyle, prioritize Q over Burst over normal attacks. But for on-field playstyle, prioritize Q over normal attacks over Burst. The head of the Liwe Qixin is the Qian Xuan, and owner of the floating palace, the Jade Chamber. Ming Wan is a 4-star Geo Mage. She plays the role of a main DPS, utilizing her full kit using her normal attacks to deal consistent damage. Her elemental skill will be used to deal a small amount of damage periodically, but also buff you and protect you for enemy projectiles. And her elemental burst can be quite the powerful nuke if you have the constellations for it. Her best weapons are the Memory of Dust, Lost Prayer to the Sacred Wind, the Wood Sith, and the Coteos. For artifact, you can use a mix of the following two pieces. 2-piece Archaic, 2-piece Husk, and 2-piece Emblem. Always prioritizing crit rate, crit damage, attack percent, and energy recharge. Prioritize her normal attack and burst the same, and her skill can be a little bit lower. Strong, reliable, and cute, the maid to end all maids, Noel, is a 4-star Geo Great Swordswoman. She plays the triple role of a shielder, healer, and main DPS. Using her shield, together with her normal attacks, will make you heal your party members as well as yourself. But not all the time. But when you have your burst enabled, dealing normal attack damage while your shield is active, will heal yourself and your team 100% of the time. Her best weapons are the Red Horn Stone Thrasher, the Serpent Spine, the White Blind, and the Skyward Pride. For artifacts, use 4-piece Husk of Opulent Dreams, prioritizing crit rate and damage, defense percent, and energy recharge. Prioritize her normal attack over her burst over her skill. The curse when you are trying to get your limited banner 5 stars and one of the most meme characters of Genshin. Chichi is a standard banner. 5 star cryo swords girl. She plays the role of a healer using her elemental skill to heal the active character. But while Chichi is on the field and you have your skill active, using normal attacks will heal Chichi and the rest of the party. For her elemental burst, Chichi marks enemies with the fortune preserving talisman. When your active character hits the marked enemy, they will gain HP. Her best weapons are the sacrificial sword, the summit shaper, the favonius sword, and the Amenoma Kageyuchi. Her best artifact is the 4-piece Ocean Yield Clam. Prioritize attack percent, energy recharge, and flat attack. Prioritize her skill and burst all the same. Inazuma's Archon, worst cook in Tevat, and builder of godly puppets, the Raiden Shogun is an interesting character, since she is actually two. The Shogun Puppet and A, which is Inazuma's Archon. Either way, she is a 5-star Electro Spear Woman, although most of the time you'll be fighting with her Booba Sword. She can play the role of a main DPS or a support, using her elemental skill to periodically attack in conjunction with the active character dealing Electro damage. And also her elemental skill will increase the elemental burst damage based on the energy cost of the elemental burst of the character. With her own elemental burst, Raiden pulls out a sword right out of her titties. But don't be mistaken, if you are not with a Raiden, you are not in for a good time. Using her elemental burst, Raiden transitions to a main DPS playstyle, dealing massive amount of electro damage on burst activation, and her subsequent sword attacks will be turned into electro damage. Her best weapons are the Engulfing Lightning, Skyward Spine, Harvonious Lance, and the catch. Her best artifact set is the 4-piece Emblem of Severed Fate. Prioritizing energy recharge, crit rate and damage, 
attack percent or elemental mastery depending on the team configuration. Prioritize her burst over her skill. Woven Dawn's Protector, raised by the Wolf of the North and the Wolf Pack, and Lisa, or as he calls her, the Purple Teacher's Disciple, Razor, is a 4-star Electro Guard Swordsman. He plays the role of a main DPS, using his normal attacks to deal the bulk of the damage. Since he is Electro, he can combine with Cryo characters to amplify his physical damage even further. His elemental skill is basically used simply to generate energy for his elemental burst, which activates his stand. His wolf stand will deal electro damage in conjunction with Razor's normal attacks. His best weapons are the Song of Broken Pines, the Wolf's Gravestone, the Serpent's Pine, and the Prototype Archaic. For artifacts, you can either use 4 piece Pale Flame or use a combination of 2 piece Pale and 2 piece Bloodstained Chivalry. Prioritize crit rate and damage, attack percent, and energy recharge. Prioritize his normal attacks over his burst over his skill. The fighting sister of the Church of Avonius, and the one who received the biggest nerf in Genshin history, Rosaria is a 4 star cryo spear woman. She plays the role of a sub DPS using her elemental skill to generate extra cryo particles. After using Rosaria, the next character you switch to will gain a bonus crit rate based on Rosaria's own crit rate and her elemental burst summoning a spear to deal AoE cryo damage. Her best weapons are the Staff of Homa, Skyward Spine, the Deathmatch, and the Catch. You can use either 4-piece Noblesse Oblige, 4-piece Emblem, or 4-piece Blizzard. Prioritize crit rate over crit damage and energy recharge. Prioritize her burst over her skill. The Divine Priestess of Watatsumi Island and leader of the Resistance of the Vision Hunt Decree, Sangonomi Kokomi is a 5-star Hydra Mage. Using her elemental skill, Kokomi will summon a jellyfish that will apply the wet status to enemies, and will also heal the active character at fixed intervals based on Kokomi's max HP. For her elemental burst, Kokomi assumes another stance for her normal attacks, which are increased based on her HP. And also, when the normal and charged attacks hit opponents, Kokomi will restore HP for all party members. And as a bonus, Kokomi will be resistant to interruption and can now walk on top of water. Her best and signature weapon is the Everlasting Moonglow. You can also use the Prototype Ember and the Hakushin Ring. For artifacts, use the 4-piece Ocean Healed Clan, prioritizing HP% percent, Energy Recharge and Flat HP. Prioritize her skill over her burst over her normal attacks. The Mujina Warrior and Ninja of the Shumatsuban who won't grow taller no matter how much sleep she gets. Sayu is a 4-star animal great swords girl. She plays the role of a healer, although she is more like a utility character because her elemental skill has you rolling around the ground, covering great distance at relatively good speed. Oh yeah, and it also deals damage. It can also be infused just like all other animal attacks. For her elemental burst, Sayu summons the Muji Muji Daruma, which will heal your character if he is low, and if your character's HP is above 70%, it will start attacking the enemies, dealing animal damage. Her best weapons are the Skyward Pride, the Luxurious Sea Lord, and the Katsuragikiri Nagamasa. You can either use the 4-piece Ocean Healed Clan or the 4-piece Viridescent Venereer. Prioritize Attack, Energy Recharge, and Elemental Mastery. Prioritize her burst over her skill. Mommy, I mean Shenha, is the human apprentice of Cloud Retainer. And on Su Chong Yun, he is also an exorcist and co-disciple of Ganyu. This damsel of devastation is a 5-star cryo spear woman. With her elemental skill, Enha uses her talisman spirit to do some cryo damage to the enemy, but most importantly it will buff all party members cryo damage based on Shenha's current attack. 
for her elemental burst, Shenha unleashes the talisman spirit, allowing it to do AoE cryo damage, but also decreases cryo resistance and physical resistance of the opponents within it. Her best and signature weapon is the Calamity Queller, followed by Skyward Spine, Pavonius Lens, and the Catch. You can either use 4 piece Noblesse Oblige or use 4 piece artifacts that give you attack percent. Prioritize attack and energy recharge. Also, prioritize her skill over her burst. Shikanoin Hazel is the number one detective of Inazuma. He is a 4 star animal mage. Also, he is more of I will punch you in the face but with a bit of magic kinda guy. He plays the role of a main DPS, using his normal attacks to add charges to his elemental skill, which is the bulk of the damage. Using his elemental skill, you can also charge the remaining power, or all the power if you have none. When the elemental skill charge is full, you will unleash a devastating punch. And for his elemental burst, Chikano and Hazel will kick an airball at the enemies, which will slightly pull them together and deal AoE animal damage. His best weapons are the Kagura's Verity, Lost Prayer to the Sacred Winds, Sacrificial Fragments, and the Mappa Mario. Can either use for Peace Desert Pavilion Chronicles or for Peace Viridescent Venerer. Prioritize Elemental Mastery, Root Rate and Damage, and Energy Recharge. Prioritize his normal attacks, skill and burst, all the same. The sweetest character in the game, Bio Alchemist of the Knights of Avonius, and a human with aspects of an unknown animal, even to herself. Sucrose is a 4 star animal mage. Sucrose uses her elemental skill to pull in enemies and generate elemental particles to feed into her burst, which by its turn is where her power lies. Grouping up enemies for your main DPS to deal damage to multiple enemies with ease while her ability also causes great throws that increase the elemental mastery and the 20% of the EM will be transferred to all party members. For her weapons you can use the sacrificial fragments, Mappa Mare and Thrilling Tales of the Dragon Slayers. Her best artifact set is the 4 piece Viridescent Venerer, prioritizing elemental mastery over energy recharge over crit rate and damage. Prioritize her burst over her skill. The 11th Fatui Harbinger and fight enthusiast who learned from the depths of the abyss, Child aka Tartaglia aka Ajax aka Tartarsos, Tortolini aka Tortilla aka Tarantula aka Mr. Whale Shooter is a 5 star Hydro Archer, although most of the time you wanna use his dual blades, spear thingy. He plays the role of a main DPS, using his elemental skill will cause Tartaglia to activate his dual blade spear stance, dealing only hydro damage to enemies, and also affecting them with Riptide Slash, which will periodically do an explosion of AoE hydro damage. His elemental burst has two variations, one when he is not on his elemental skill stance, he will shoot a hydro arrow, dealing AoE hydro damage and applying the riptide status to enemies hit, and he also returns a portion of his energy cost after use. But if he is in his melee stance, he performs a large AoE, dealing massive hydro damage to all surrounding opponents, which triggers the riptide blast. His best and signature weapon is the Polar Star. From the standard banner you can get the Scarlet Heart, Battle Pass, the Viridescent Hunt, and you can also craft the Prototype Crescent. For artifact, use the 4 piece Heart of Death, prioritizing crit rate and damage, attack percent and energy recharge. Prioritize his skill over his burst. Hailing for Monstat, but a housekeeper for the Kamisato clan. Also known as a fixer around Inazuma, Toma is a 4 star Pyro Spearman. Toma plays the role of a shielder and sub DPS, having the second strongest possible shield in the game. Using his elemental skill, he will conjure such Pyro Shield, which absorbs Pyro more efficiently, but also is a stackable shield, meaning if you already have a shield active and activate your elemental skill, the damage absorption 
will stack. With his elemental burst, Tomob will also create such shield, but with the added benefit of summoning the Scorching Oyoroi, which deals damage in conjunction with the active character's normal attacks. His best weapons are the Engulfing Lightning, Kyward Spine, Pavonius Lens, and the Black Tassel. You can either use for peace emblem on Severe Fate or for peace noblesse oblige, prioritizing HP percent, energy recharge, and crit rate and damage. Prioritize his burst and skill all the same. A forest watcher at Gandharva View, overseeing the Avidia Forest, and also a scholar from the Academia, the Nairi is a standard banner by Star Dendro Archer. He plays the role of a main DPS, just like Yanyu, the Nairi's charge attacks have two levels. The first level is a normal charge attack, but the second level fires off a Reef Arrow that deals Dendro damage and will create four cluster arrows that will track nearby opponents and deal Dendro damage to them. Using his elemental skill, Tenari throws a Dendro Grenade at the enemy dealing AoE Dendro damage, but also creating a Dendro field that creates illusions that taunt opponents. Additionally, Tainari's charge shots will be charged faster, up to 3 arrows. With his elemental burst, Tainari draws his bow, firing 6 shots at the same time that will track the enemy, dealing Dendro damage. His best and signature weapon is the Hunter's Path, the Skyward Harp, the Viridescent Hunt and the Prototype Crescent are also good options. For Artifact, you can either use for Peace Deep Wood Memories or for Peace Gilded Dreams. Prioritizing Crit Rate and Damage, Elemental Mastery and Energy Recharge. Prioritize his normal attacks over his burst over his skill. Our first character to start the game, and the Fisherman that caught Paimon. The Traveler, often referred to the player's avatar, and it can be either Aether or Lumine, are a 5 star starter character, which will eventually wield all elements, and they are a sword user. The role of the Traveler varies, but mostly they are used as a sub DPS, for example the Animal Traveler can use his elemental skill and burst to group enemies. Geo Traveler can summon Geo Constructs and deal a good amount of Geo damage. Electro Traveler is more for supporting other party members with his elemental skill and burst, and the Dendro Traveler aids you with Dendro related elemental reaction. For the Animal Traveler's best weapons, we have the Freedom Sworn, Primordial Jade Cutter, the Faster in the Xylon, and the Iron Sting. For the Geo Traveler's best weapons, we have the Misplitter Reforge, Primordial Jade Cutter, the Black Sword, the Harbinger of Dawn. For the Electro Traveler's best weapons, we have the Skyward Blade, the Favonius Sword, the Sacrificial Sword, and the Faster in Desire. For the Dendro Traveler, we have the Freedom Sworn, the Sacrificial Sword, the Iron Sting, and the Sapwood Blade. Now for artifacts. For Animal Traveler, use 4 piece Viridescent Venerer, prioritizing Elemental Mastery or Energy Recharge. For Geo Traveler, you can use 2 piece Husk. 2 piece archaic, prioritizing crit damage, attack percent, and energy recharge. For Electro Traveler, use 4 piece Emblem of Severed Fate, prioritizing energy recharge and crit rate and damage. For Dendro Traveler, prioritize 4 piece Deep Wood Memories, prioritizing energy recharge and elemental mastery. And also for all of them, prioritize burst over skill. The Windborne Bard, Animo Archon, and Loco Drunk, Barbados, most commonly known as Venti, is a 5 star animal archer. He's a bar support whose main function is to group up enemies. Anytime you may fight a large group of enemies affected by the pull force and your main DPS can hit the targets in his burst, Venti will be a nice addition to the team. Venti's best and signature weapon is the Elegy for the End. But for all their weapon choices, we have the Windbloom Ode, the Favonius Warble, and the Stringless. His best artifact set is the 4 piece Redescent Venere, prioritizing Elemental Mastery and Energy Recharge. Prioritize his burst over his skill. 
the former six foot two and puppet created by Inazuma's archon Karamush, he based himself on history and is now known only as the Wanderer. Although spoiler alert, he did get his memory as Karamush back. His edgy animal boyo is a five star animal mage. He plays the role of a main DPS, dealing the bulk of his damage with his elemental skill, floating up into the air and attacking with normal attacks, dealing wind blade damage to enemies. He can also charge attack to deal a sort of AoE damage, and his elemental burst will conjure up a large AoE animal damage. His best and signature weapon is the Too Late to Lie Remembrance, followed by Lost Prayers to the Sacred Winds. The Widsith and the Blackleaf Agates. His best artifact set is the Fort Beast Desert Pavilion, prioritizing crit rate and damage, attack percent, and energy recharge. Prioritize his normal attack over his Q over his burst. The greatest chef in Zevat, even though she tries to make everything an ingredient and also a top tier character ever since the launch of the game. Chang Ling is a 4 star Pyro Spearwoman. He plays the role of a sub DPS, utilizing her elemental skill, Roba, deploying him to the field to do a little bit of pyro damage and generate pyro particles. Her main damage comes from her elemental burst, which summons a pyro nato out of her spear, which will circle the active character, periodically dealing pyro damage when it comes in contact with enemies. Her weapons is a common half joke, half not joke that Chun Ling can use any spear in the game. That said, I'll still give you the four main options, which are the engulfing lightning, the skyward spine, the dragon's bane, and the catch. Her best artifact set is the four piece emblem of severed fate, prioritizing energy recharge, crit rate and damage, and attack percent. Prioritize her burst over her skill. Even edgier than the Wanderer, known as one of the Adepti, the General Yaksha, or the Bane of All Evil, the Almond Tofu Enthusiast, Xiao is a 5 star animal spearman. He plays the role of a main DPS, utilizing his elemental skill to do 2 quick attacks or 3 if you have more constellations, to generate animal particles to unleash his burst, which is the bulk of his damage. His elemental burst converts all his normal attacks into animal damage, but most importantly makes Xiao jump high into the air and plunge down with the power of animal dealing AoE animal damage. His best weapons are the Primordial Jade Winged Spear, Skyward Spine, the Deathmatch and the Blackleaf Pool. You can either use 4-piece Vermilion hereafter or a combination of 2-piece Viridescent, 2-piece Desert or 2 piece plus 18%. Prioritize crit rate and damage over attack over energy recharge. For talents, prioritize his normal attack over his burst over his skill. Second son of the guild manager of the Feiyun Commerce Guild, a practitioner of the Guho clan's arts, and also an author by the pay name of Zen Yu. Xing Cho is a 4 star Hydro Swordsman plays the role of a sub DPS using his elemental skill to deal hydro damage to enemies, generating elemental particles for his burst, which in turn summons rain swords to attack in conjunction with the active characters, normal attacks dealing extra hydro damage. His best weapons are the sacrificial sword, the primordial date cutter, the favonio sword, and the amenoma kegeuchi. For artifacts, you can use the 4 piece emblem of Severed Fate, prioritizing energy recharge, crit rate and damage, and attack percent. Prioritize his burst over his skill. The fiery rock and roll musician of Liwe, Tinian, is a 4 star, prior of Great Swordsman. She can play the role of a shooter sub DPS or main DPS with her elemental skill conjuring up a pyro shield that has different powers depending on how many enemies you hit, which can periodically discharge pyro damage at the enemy. And with her elemental burst dealing an initial stance of physical damage and a large AoE pyro damage. Her best weapons are the Red Horn Stone Thrasher, the Wolf's Gravestone, the Serpent's Pine, 
and the white blind. For other effects you can use for peace, tenacity of the millilith, or for peace pale flame, for the main DPS playstyle. Prioritize crit rate and damage, defense percent, and energy recharge. For her talents, prioritize normal attack over skill over burst for her main DPS playstyle, or prioritize skill over burst for her support playstyle. The Pink Fox Girl and Head Shrine Maiden of the Grand Nerukam Shrine, also owner of the Yai Publishing House and familiar to the Raiden Shogun. Yai Miku is a 5 star Electro Mage. She plays the role of a sub DPS, deploying a total of 3 totems to periodically deal electro damage to enemies as lightning strikes down on them. Also, her elemental burst will discharge a large lightning at the enemy and depending on how many totems you have on the field, the lightning will strike more than once. Her best and signature weapon is the Kagura's Verity, followed by Scarlet Atlas, the Widsif and the Blackleaf Agate. For artifacts you can use the Four Piece Thundering Fury or Emblem of Severed Fate, prioritizing crit rate and damage, energy recharge and elemental mastery or attack percent, depending on your team configuration. Prioritize her skill over her burst. The premier legal advisor of Liwe, and like Ganyu, she is half illuminated beast, half human, but a younger one, who did not fought in the battlefield of the past. Yanfei is a 4 star fighter mage. She plays the role of a main DPS, dealing purely pyro damage to enemies. Her gameplay being similar to Ningguang, where you charge your seals, except with her elemental skill she will charge all of her seals at once. And when you have all your seals, you will unleash a charge attack with increased damage. Also her elemental burst will deal an AoE pyro damage and also recharge her seals. Her best weapons are the Lost Prayer to the Sacred Winds, Kagura's Verity, the Wilsif, and the Blackleaf Agate. For artifacts, you should use for peace Crimson Witch of Flames, prioritizing crit rate and damage, attack percent, and elemental mastery. Prioritize her normal attacks over her burst over her skill. A child favored by the Adepti of Liwe. Junior Disciple to Shen Ling, under their master Streetward Rambler, aka Madame Ping, and also an assistant to Ganyu. Yao Yao is a 4 star Dendro Spear Girl. He plays the role of a healer, deploying her bunny on the field with her elemental skill. We will have him throwing radishes. If your HP is below 70%, it will heal you. Otherwise, the bunny will attack the enemies, dealing Dendro damage. For her elemental burst, Yao Yao can summon 3 bunnies at once, it will also increase her movement speed and her dendro resistance. However, these bunnies will disappear if Yao Yao leaves the field. Her best weapons are the Staff of Homa, the Favonius Lance, the Kitang Cross Spear and the Black Tassel. Her best artifact set is the 4 piece Tenacity of the Millilith, prioritizing HP% percent, energy recharge and elemental mastery. For her talents, prioritize her skill over her burst. A mysterious woman who works for the Ministry of Civil Affairs of Liwe from the shadows, with a facade of working at the Yanshan Tea House, collaborator to Ning Wang, known as the Night Orchid. Yelan is a 5 star Hydro Archer. She plays the role of a sub DPS, utilizing her elemental skill to ensnare enemies, dealing hydro damage to them and generating particles for her burst, which in turn summons a dice that will attack in conjunction with the active character's normal attacks, dealing hydro damage. Her best weapons are the Aqua Simulacra, the Elegy for the End, the Favonius Warble, and the Sacrificial Bow. Her best artifact set is the 4 piece emblem of Severed Fate. Prioritize energy recharge, crit rate and damage, and HP percent. Prioritize her burst over her skill, over her normal attacks. Owner of the Naganohara fireworks and an expert at it, this lovely Bondi who loves to wrap herself in cloth instead of using regular underwear. 
The Queen of Summer in Marukami Island, Yoimiya is a 5-star Pyro Archer. She is a main DPS, which most of her damage comes from her normal attacks. However, utilizing her elemental skill, she infuses her normal attacks with the power of Pyro. And for her elemental burst, she marks one enemy on the field to be afflicted with a status deal Pyro damage to such enemy when attacked at certain intervals. Her best and signature weapon is the Thundering Pulse, the Rust, the Scattered Heart, and the special note, the Slingshot R5, which can outperform the Skyward and Rust up to Refinement 3, but it has a range limiter. For artifacts, you can either use the 4-piece Shimenawa's Reminiscence, which you shouldn't be unleashing your elemental burst so carelessly, but also, if you don't care about that, you can use the 2-piece Crimson Witch and 2-piece plus 18%, prioritizing crit rate and damage, attack percent, and elemental mastery. Prioritize her normal attack over her skill, over her burst. A famous figure in the opera scene and singer of Liwa Harbor, director of the Yuhan Opera Troupe and play writer, one of which we get to see in the game, The Divine Dance of Devastation, based on Shen He. Yun Jin is a four-star Geospear woman. With her elemental skill, Yun Jin assumes a stance to parry the enemy. If the attack is parried, it will go straight to level 2, dealing an increased amount of damage. However, if it is not parried, you can hold the skill to charge from level 1 or 2 and release it to deal the damage. For her burst, Yunjin deals a small amount of AoE Geo damage, empowering all allies with normal attack damage bonus based on Yunjin's current defense. The effects of this burst will be clear after a set duration or after a set number attacks are hit. Her best weapons are the Favonius Lens, Engulfing Lightning, the Catch, and Prototype Star Glitter. For artifacts, you can use the 4-piece Husk of Opulent Dreams, prioritizing Energy Recharge, Defense Percent, and Crit Rate and Damage. Prioritize her burst over her skill. The final character in the list, Consultant of the Wangshan Funeral Parlor, a man versed in all manner of knowledge, an Adeptus and the now retired Geo Archon, the CEO of Geo, formerly known as Rex Lapis or Morax. John Glee is a 5 star Geo Spearman. He plays the role of a shielder and a support and off field DPS. Using his elemental skill, John Glee will create the most powerful shield in the game and also summon a pillar that will periodically deal Geo damage to nearby opponents. And for his elemental burst, Zhongli summons a Geo Meteor from the sky, which will petrify enemies for a few seconds and also deal massive amounts of Geo damage in a large AoE area. His best weapons are the Staff of Homa, Skyward Spine, the Favonius Lance, and the Black Tassel. Prioritize the 4 piece Tenacity of the Millilith, prioritizing HP% percent for his shield strength. Crit rate and damage for extra damage and energy recharge. Prioritize his skill over his burst. If you made it to the end of the video, be it by watching it fully or maybe just podcasting it, I thank you very much. All I wanted to do with this video is help. So if this video helped you in some way or if you just liked it, check out the channel. Watch another video. If you like the content, subscribe to see more. If this video is a big success, I'll make one for the team compositions and post some updates after Fontaine comes out. Also, I'm still gonna play Minecraft Hardcore if we reach 100 subs, so there is another incentive to subscribe. I should also mention that I started a second channel. That one is just for clips and edits of other people I watch, mostly VTubers to be honest, and it seems to be doing really well, so check that one out as well. But anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.